Welcome back guys, it's Marlon Etcheverry from the Natural Social Science Multimedia Lab here at Miami-Dade Kendall Campus. Today we're going to be looking at how to solve for the oxidation states in a compound. In the previous videos we looked at ionic compounds, we saw how they donate and accept electrons, we looked at covalent compounds and looked at in depth at how they share electrons. Now we're going to take a closer look at the individual elements and try to find out how many of these electrons are being given or how many are being accepted in these particular cases. So, uh, in the following graphic that we're going to demonstrate to you, there's a list of rules. I suggest you take a very close look at those rules and read over them carefully. There's a long list, but we'll discuss later on which ones are the most important. Now, that seems like a lot of rules to memorize, but what you should do is when you first encounter a compound, so let's say we encounter a compound like this, SR3N2, you shouldn't try to think of all those rules and try to figure out what's going on here in this compound. The better idea, the correct approach, is to ask yourself, what type of compound do I have? Is it ionic or is it covalent? If it's an ionic compound, it's not very difficult to predict the charges at all. It's based on what we looked at previously where you can simply look at the periodic table and we can identify the charges. So, if we're trying to figure out the charge of the nitrogen here, for example, or even the strontium, you'll see that it's not very difficult. Here we have a metal, strontium, and here you have a nonmetal, nitrogen, strontium nitride. So we can clearly see that we have a metal and nonmetal, so we have an ionic compound. So I can simply go over to the periodic table and I can figure out the charges. Nitrogen is right here and you can, if you recall the way the charges worked, this column is zero, this one is negative one, negative two, and then negative three. So nitrogen is most definitely has a charge of negative three, which means that it's gaining three electrons. If we look at strontium here, in the second column, and you recall the charges for these metals, it goes positive one for the first column, positive two for the second column, so strontium, sure enough, is a positive two charge, which means that it is losing two electrons. If they were to ask you what's the charge of nitrogen in particular, it wouldn't be very difficult. You could simply say that nitrogen is equal to negative three. Now, let's take a look at a different compound. Here we have NO2, nitrogen dioxide. You have to be careful with this one. Nitrogen is a nonmetal and oxygen is a nonmetal. So this is a different type of compound. Here we're dealing with a covalent compound and the rules and charges that we had for ionic are not necessarily true in a covalent compound. So which, which rules can we rely on uh, most of the time to, to guide us in solving for the charge of, for example, our nitrogen? Well, there's a couple of rules that are very important and I'll give them to you. One of the rules is that whenever you have oxygen, it's gonna have a charge of negative two most of the time. There are what's known as peroxides, where the charge is negative one, and superperoxides, or superoxides, I apologize, where the charge is negative one half, but those are pretty rare. The other compound that's going to help you is hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to always, I should say almost always, be a charge of positive one, unless it's attached to a metal. So using these two, it's going to help you solve for the oxidation states in a covalent compound. Let's come back to our compound here of NO2 and see how we should approach in solving for this nitrogen. What you have to do is you have to create a formula based on what you have here, an equation based on the formula. So for example, if you have one nitrogen here plus two oxygens, we can see that the overall charge here, since there's nothing present here, we understand that there's an invisible zero here. If there were a charge here, like a negative one or a negative two, I would plug that in here on the right side of the equation. Now I plug in the charges that I'm still aware of, which is oxygen. Oxygen, like I said, is almost always negative two, so I go ahead and plug that in. So then it's two times a negative two. Over here I have nitrogen. And now I can solve this just like a regular algebra equation where I'm solving for my unknown. So let's go ahead and do that. Here I have nitrogen plus negative four is equal to zero. I solve for this, I say plus four on both sides. And sure enough, my nitrogen is equal to a positive 4. So you can see that the charge here is very different from what we saw previously in our ionic example. 
So don't think once you've memorized the rules for ionic compounds that you know how to solve the rules uh, and the charges for the covalent compounds. They're a little bit different. You have to be careful. I hope this helps. Uh, in the next video, we'll take another look at this. We'll look at another example, and we'll take a deeper look into this concept. Thank you.